Hey guys, so I'm about to head off to Florida near Miami to visit a friend, partly for vacation, but also to talk about and look at his new app that he just developed with his team. And it's an app that I can't get into too many details because of business reasons, but essentially it's an app that does a lot of complex reporting and a lot of uh, handles a lot of complexities that typically engineers would handle. And he has been an engineer in this field for quite a long time. And so he saw an opportunity to uh, automate the process and really disrupt the entire industry. And this is a classic example of two things. Well, number one, where I've mentioned in previous vlogs that having domain knowledge, knowledge of a particular domain can help a lot in terms of your ability to see an opportunity to leverage coding skills to automate uh, certain processes within that particular domain. So this guy in particular works as an engineer and I won't get into specifics because of business reasons, but he saw a huge opportunity. So I've mentioned, I mentioned this because I've talked to people who come to the vlog or send me emails and whatnot, they may have experience in marketing or accounting or biology. Pick whatever domain, whatever field you'd like. And they're wondering if coding might help and or whether uh, they should learn to code in their 30s or early 40s. And I say yes, because with that domain knowledge behind you, you will be a very interesting person to hire or to work with because not only will you have that domain knowledge, you'll have that coding skills and you'll be able to marry those two together, which could be a very powerful combination, as my friend just did. Now, he's doing it. He's launched a business off of it and he's picking up clients, so on and so forth. The other interesting thing about this app is that it was created with two languages. It was created, uh, well, there's two parts to it. There is the web app part of it, and that was created with PHP, but the AI component, and that's the other part of this, he leverages AI. His custom AI was built with Python, of course. So you see a classic example, uh, most web apps, are not, not most, all web apps are created with multiple languages, coding and programming languages. So you're going to have, of course, HTML and CSS. You're always going to have JavaScript. And then in terms of server side, it depends where you want to go. It could be .NET, C Sharp, could be Java, it could be JavaScript with Node, it could be PHP, it could be Python on the server. But then you have particular languages that are very good at a particular task. So in the case of AI, if you're going to write AI, you're going to do it in Python. So he has a PHP web app that is sending requests to, if you will, is sending information to the Python-based AI. The Python-based AI does its job, sends back the results to the PHP app. The PHP app then displays these results. This is a, an example of how Python is used in conjunction with other programming languages to get the job done. So the big picture in all this is that you see how AI uh, is starting to transform entire industries. It's just at the very beginning, but you can expect to see this happen more and more and more and more, which... Uh, We'll have two problems. First is going to be dislocation. People's jobs will be lost, unfortunately. But that will open up a huge amount of opportunity as well. Don't worry. Coders are going to be lost to go. They may go in 25 years, 30 years, when the true AI starts really coming in. But So I wouldn't be too concerned about it as a coder at this point. But the first jobs are going to be the simple jobs, You for sure. Like In the next four years, you're going to have all the... Sal That's weird. The phone fell. In the next five years, you're going to have um, the self-driving level five fully autonomous vehicles, which is going to really hurt. To, well, it's going to end truck driving and deliveries and all this kind of stuff. That's going to really be nailed. You're going to have much greater automation. So we're going to have to learn to be more nimble in terms of what we do. Learning to code is a big part of it. Developing good communication skills, uh, written and verbal, is a big part of it. 
So it's, uh, yeah, that's it for that. For that. Now, I just want to close off for people who may be worried about AI and robotics uh, in that it's going to mean Terminator and all this kind of stuff. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's going to be opposite. History teaches us that as uh, technology enters into uh, our lives, the cost of everything drops and the quality of, quality of life increases. So I think what's going to happen, and they're already talking about it in many different countries, about universal basic income. They're going to have to do it, and they're going to have to provide universal basic income. This is not the same as welfare or communism, uh, simply because in a communist situation where you still needed people to work, and when nobody's, when everybody's getting paid and there's no incentive to work harder, then productivity drops and everything falls apart. In the world of AI and robotics, you don't have that problem because robots don't get tired, they don't get lazy, robots uh, don't go on strike, etc. You know, productivity doesn't fall with robots. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Throw on top of that AI, and then it's like it's like almost like a Star Trek world. Now, this is going to take time to evolve. I don't know how many years could be 10 years, 15 years, who knows? But that's where it's going. But anyway, I just you know, I you know, I don't have a crystal ball, so I don't know all outcomes. But if you look at history, you can see that in Western and advanced societies, the very poor today are living much better off than the very, very poor 100 years ago. Like, much better off. And, uh, I, of course, you know, there's variations and so on, so on from country to country, but I have a friend of mine who I went to high school with, and he's basically become a bum. And, but he gets his welfare, as he calls it, his welfare. And uh, he has a nice apartment. He's got high-speed internet. He's got a 50-inch LCD display TV. He's got computers, and he's able to watch all the movies he wants. He's entertained, and, he, and food is relatively cheap. And so, you know, he actually probably lives a better life than uh, many of the very wealthy people from 100 years ago, 150 years ago. Definitely a better, definitely, definitely a better life. So, you know, take this and put it on steroids. Take this and, and you know, cube it. In terms, because when AI comes into place and robotics really starts to roll out in a big way, the cost of everything is going to be so inexpensive. So to house uh, my lazy uh, bum friend, like uh, I won't say his name, to put him in a nice place and give him all the services won't cost society hardly anything, if anything, if since robots and AI are going to be doing all the work. Anyway, it's enough of this rant.